Automating the T-Spot TB assay procedure to increase lab capacity and reduce labor costs. The T-Spot TB test is an in vitro diagnostic test to aid in the diagnosis of mycobacterium tuberculosis infection. The test principle is the detection of effector T cells that respond to stimulation by mycobacterium tuberculosis antigens ESAT6 and CFP10 by capturing interferon gamma in the vicinity of T cells purified from whole blood. This video will cover the pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical test processes and demonstrate how laboratories can improve sample throughput through a suite of automation. Whole blood samples are submitted to Oxford Diagnostic Laboratories in our customized shipping containers, which ensure samples are maintained at room temperature throughout storage and transit. Upon receipt, the boxes are opened and the contents are removed. The shipping container makes use of cryopack pouches. These pouches incorporate material that uses phase changes, for example, melting or freezing, to absorb or release heat at constant temperatures and thereby buffer the sample from external temperature swings during shipping. Samples and accompanying test requisitions are removed from the biohazard bags. Patient information on the tube is matched to patient information on the test requisition and the sample is assessed for suitability, including sample age, blood volume, and collection tube type. A T-Spot TB test is ordered in the laboratory information system, and an accession number with a barcode is generated. Barcodes make recognition of each test sample simple in the automation instruments. The technician labels centrifuge tubes and a Lucasep tube, which are used for the pre-analytical steps. Initially, the technologist uncaps the blood sample and adds 25 microliter of T-cell extend reagent per one milliliter of blood received. The tube is recapped, gently inverted to mix, and incubated at room temperature for 20 plus minutes. The technologist then proceeds with isolation of peripheral blood mononuclear cells, or PBMCs. Treated whole blood is mixed with RPMI 1640 medium and then poured directly into a Lucasep tube. Lucasep tubes offer a time-saving approach to FICOL gradients. The tubes contain a porous barrier that enables the blood sample to be poured directly onto the FICOL gradient, thereby eliminating the need to gently layer the sample. The Lucasep tubes are centrifuged to separate PBMCs from red blood cells. The technologist collects the cloudy white band of PBMCs and transfers them to a new 15 milliliter conical tube for washing. The tube is centrifuged for seven minutes. Following this centrifuging step, the supernatant is discarded. The cell pellet is resuspended in cell culture medium and the suspension is centrifuged one final time. The technologist discards the supernatant and resuspends the pellet in 0.7 milliliters of AIM-5 cell culture medium in preparation for cell counting. The cell washes are designed to remove circulating factors in whole blood known to interfere with interferon gamma tests, including rheumatoid factor, heterophilic antibodies, and pre-existing amounts of interferon gamma. PBMCs can be counted manually, but this is labor intensive. Use of automated hematology analyzers offer many advantages over manual cell counting methods. Ease in sample preparation. Rapid sample throughput up to hundreds per hour. Accurate sample identity through the use of barcode technology. Rapid and accurate transmission of results into a laboratory information system. Nearly all analyzers can be interfaced with a laboratory information system thus eliminating the need for a person to hand record or transmit results. An aliquot of PBMCs is placed into the instrument. Less than one minute later, the cell count is available. Once the PBMC count is available, a 500 microliter final cell suspension must be prepared at a concentration of 2.5 times 10 to the fifth cells per 100 microliter. 
A formula is built into the laboratory information system such that based on the PBMC count, the laboratory information system calculates the amount of PBMCs and AIM-5 cell culture media necessary to prepare a final cell suspension. Final cell suspensions can be prepared manually, however this is labor intensive. Use of automated liquid handling instruments to prepare final cell suspensions and add reagents and cell suspensions to wells in the T-spot TB microtiter plate allows for many samples to be processed rapidly. The Janus liquid handling system, manufactured by Perkin Elmer, is ideal for performing cell dilutions. The instrument has an eight-tip pipetting arm to increase speed, utilizes barcode technology to identify samples, and has detailed software to track all movements. The technologist loads necessary labware for the cell dilution step. Filtered pipette tips, a sterile deep well plate, and a sterile trough containing AIM-5 cell culture media. The instrument is currently configured to process in batches of up to 96 samples. To start the process, 96 samples identified with unique barcodes are placed into loading racks. A customizable software program is initiated to read the barcode for each sample in a rack. The program then searches an imported file to locate the corresponding sample data containing the PBMC counts and the required volumes of PBMCs and AIM-5 necessary for final dilutions. The pipetting arm picks up pipette tips and proceeds to aspirate and dispense various volumes of AIM-5 into the deep well plate, eight wells at a time. Each position in the deep well plate corresponds directly to a sample position in a rack. After the required amounts of AIM-5 are dispensed, the Janus proceeds to mix, aspirate, and dispense PBMCs for each sample into its corresponding position in the deep well plate. The dilutions are now complete and each sample has now been standardized to 2.5 million PBMCs per milliliter. The Janus completes 96 cell dilutions in a matter of minutes. The final cell suspensions are ready for plating. Cell plating and reagent addition is also made quick and easy with the Janus liquid handling system. Several vials of reagents, including AIM-5 cell media, panel A, panel B, and PHA, and four T-spot TB plates labeled with unique identifiers, are loaded to specific positions on the Janus. The technologist interacts with the instrument software to input the plate numbers, an essential step for later when plate labels and printouts are generated. The T-spot TB protocol is initiated, and in approximately 20 minutes, 96 unique samples are plated along with reagents. Plate lids identify the specific location of each sample as plated by the Janus. Each batch of 96 samples takes 40 minutes from start to finish, enabling many hundreds of samples to be processed per day. Plates are then incubated overnight. The Janus liquid handling system is also used on day two to develop spots and prepare the plates for reading. Following incubation, the T-spot TB microtiter plates are washed with phosphate buffered saline. This step can be performed on the Janus or a plate washer. Wash cycle times can be shortened to 30 seconds with a plate washer such as the Biotech EX405. Four plates can be washed in less than three minutes. The plates are then loaded back onto the Janus and 50 microliter of secondary conjugated antibody is added to each well. Plates are placed into a refrigerator for one hour incubation at two to eight degrees Celsius. Following incubation, the T-spot TB microtiter plates are washed three times with phosphate buffered saline using the Janus or a plate washer and placed back onto the Janus. 50 microliter of substrate is added to each well and the plates are removed from the Janus. After seven minutes of incubation at room temperature, the plates are flooded with deionized water and allowed to dry. The plates are ready to be read. An Ellispot plate reader, manufactured by CTL, 
is used to count spots on a T-Spot TV plate. Software customized by CTL for the T-Spot TV assay allows for rapid counting and quality control review of spots. The technologist opens the scan and count application and imports the sample accession numbers from the laboratory information system. The unique plate identifier is entered and the plate is loaded onto the instrument. Spots in each of the 96 wells are counted by the CTL plate reader, a process which takes less than five minutes. Images are reviewed and approved by the technologist and the final results are exported to the laboratory information system to eliminate the need for manual entry of spot counts. Results are then issued to the customer from the laboratory information system. Using these processes and instrumentation, our laboratory routinely processes hundreds of samples per day and has the capacity to accommodate thousands of samples if necessary.